So that many coolers, and this is the i9 13900K. And the question is, can you air cool it? Well, there's a bunch of coolers here and we're gonna find out. And we're also gonna benchmark them or make a score table which one is the best. We've got air coolers from about $20 to about $150. Some of the low end and the best air coolers on the market. I have no idea what's gonna happen and how well they benchmark. So let's start this long journey. Best Buy and their top deals are happening right now. So check that out in the video description below. I've got a test bench setup over here. This is the ASUS Z790 Pro Art motherboard. And I'm using the ASUS motherboard just because some of the coolers I have don't have LGA 1700 mounting, but because this motherboard has LGA 1200 and 1700 holes, I can use both of the cooling basically in this one. And we're gonna set the bar for the benchmark with this cooler here. 360 millimeter AIO from T-Force, team group T-Force, if you're uh, you know, familiar with their RAM probably and SSDs. And they have a Siren 360E, GD360E AIO. And I've got it set up over there. And this is going to be the bar to see can the air coolers be better than a 360 millimeter AIO or under or how does it work. So basically this test runs 100% CPU utilization in kind of bursts of a few minutes then there's a little pause and then again and again and again and it takes the average of all of these and then calculates the score so we know exactly like the cooler our cpu is going to be the higher the clock speed and then the better performance the most important note here on the test bench setup is the actual power limits pl1 and pl2 now intel from the factory says that the maximum power it's going to draw is 253 so the pl2 is 253 and the pl1 is 1 25 watts but we know that each motherboard when you slot it in there is just going to boost it if you have the multi-core enhancement what we have here on the asus board enabled it will draw like 330 watts and actually no cooler on the market will be able to keep up with that just because the actual heat is done on such a small spot and it's hard to get the cooling out so what i have done is i've set the pl1 and pl2 limit at 295 watts so this is still much more than what intel suggests the cpu should be doing but not quite ridiculous amount so we actually just make our testing completely useless because everything's going to be thermal throttling but this way we can see how long can it keep that temperature with 295 watts maximum 10 minutes go and zero that also one more thing i want to show is here the turbo boost power window i have set to 128 seconds which is the maximum but pl1 and pl2 as you can see are 285 watts as you can see, the first two runs, uh, the AIO is keeping up nicely, about 91 degrees, uh, 285 watts pulled from the socket, you can see here. We can see the clock speeds here as well, 5.3, and we'll see how long can it keep this up. At the moment, we are not thermal throttling. And if you see a red yes in here, thermal throttling, then we are thermal throttling. Like we can open this up, see right now, nothing is thermal throttling. As you can see, boom, we slightly thermal throttled just for a minute. I bet this was one of the P cores. Yep, P core 5 slightly thermal throttled. And as you can see, the clock speeds are struggling to keep it up at 5.3 gigahertz. It goes 5.2, 5.4 and so on. So we'll see what the score is in the end of the 10 minutes. Alrighty then, test complete and we can see that 38,980 points with the AIO. As you can see, we did thermal throttle there, but I'm just looking at the, the exact uh, average temperature here as well. 93 degrees average in 10 minutes and 16 seconds. The maximum temperature was 97, but the thermal throttling was actually happening only two cores with this AIO, which is what you'd expect that just some of the cores are running a little bit hotter than the rest of them. Shut down and let's move on to the first air cooler. By the way, for all of the coolers, I'm using the new Arctic MX-6 thermal paste and I'm using the spatula to spread it out so I can get an even kind of application on the CPUs. Okay, we've got the next cooler on and we're gonna do 10 minutes, go this average, let's go. 
look at that. A single test here on this air cooler, 93 degrees pulling 285 watts. We're not thermal throttling, ah, oh, just thermal throttled. Core five hit 96 degrees. So now our second run is already thermal throttling, but ooh, this is nice and warm here. So what is this cooler? This is the Noctua NHU-12A Chromax Black, and this is one of Noctua's amazing, amazing coolers that's so small but still packs so much cooling power. But this has got very, very quiet fans. These are the NFA-12X25 fans, and these are like one of the best fans you can get in the, in the world so quiet yet push so much air through but let's see what the final scores are going to be because right now we're running at 100 degrees and as you can see clock speeds are already 5.2 not 5.3 anymore so we'll see as you can see we're not pulling 285 watts anymore there's 277 watts so it's pulling the wattage down so, test is complete, and we can see that the score was 38,335. As you can see, not a lot of difference. We're only 1.65% slower. So as you can see, an air cooler can actually keep up with the liquid cooler uh, quite well. And if you're looking at the average clock speeds over this period of time, then the P cores on the 360 was 5.3, and then on the air cooler, it was 5.17, so about 200 megahertz lower, but still very interesting scores. Let's move on to the next Noctua cooler. Now, this is Noctua's most powerful cooler. This is the NHD 15, and this is a Chromax black version. There is also the silver version, but essentially the same. So let's see if this is actually gonna perform better than the NHU 12A. Looking at the first results, the NHU 12A was doing better because we've already 98 degrees, which the NHU 12A didn't do as much. So this one thermal throttled actually faster, which is um, interesting. But also another interesting thing that just made me think, the NSU 12A had the um, heat pipes come up actually this way, which on the heatsink come up like the same type of direction. This is the opposite direction. And I'm wondering if just the heatsink placement on the Intel 13th gen and 12th gen is better the other way because it will just cover the better areas where the heat gets dissipated. And another thing is that it just means a how good of a thermal paste application um, it, it does make when, when actually using some of the air coolers. I highly recommend using one of these uh, spatulas so you can actually spread it all across the uh, IHS so you're not gonna actually leave any like gaps or any empty places because when pressing down every little space that doesn't make a proper contact with the heatsink will actually result in lower clock speeds or temperatures and so on. As you can see, we're pulling 273 watts uh, rather than 285, as you can see. It didn't even manage to hit 100, 285, as you can see, 284. And the peak or clock speeds are 5.1 gigahertz there. 5.2, 5.1, it's, it's like struggling to keep it at 5.2. We are looking at the thermal throttling here. Quite a lot of the cores have thermal throttled on this heatsink, but the five and seven are the ones that are main ones there. Let's have a look at temperatures. Obviously all the E cores are completely five, fine. They don't even hit 90 degrees, but all the P cores are quite high. But look at that though, core zero, one and two, are quite low and then the last two cores are a little bit higher so maybe it is placement actually on the die some of the cores run hot hotter or get the heat out a bit better so now looking at the scores we got 37,364 points which is actually about four percent slower now than the AIO now Still, again, not a massive difference. About 3.4% slower than the actual NHU 12A. Let's move on to the next cooler. 
here's what I mean here. If you look at the heatsink, the actual IHS was this way. And uh, I could have put this in a different orientation this way as well. But then we might have had the heat sinks or heat pipes a little bit differently or put in some of these places which might have taken the heat out the other way. So just something for you to try. Okay, and we thermal throttled in about 5, 10 seconds, something like that. Looks like this cooler might not be as bad as the NHD 15. This is again dual tower, but it only has 5 heat pipes and they're exactly the same way, kind of like sideways rather than long ways on the uh, on the CPU. This cooler is called Noctua NHD12L. So you can get it as a single fan, which is just in the middle. So basically very, very small form factor cooler, but still packs a ton, a ton of power. It uses the same fans as on the first cooler, the Noctua NFU12A but these are just brown and the corners have been shaved off just for this cooler. So basically they're the same kind of purpose cooler, but the shape of them is different, but they're exactly the same. Now, another thing to bear in mind is as we move on to the coolers and moving on onto, on this test, you can see that the actual temperature in the room is a little bit warmer. Right now it's 24.9 degrees, started off as 22, so it's two, 2 degrees warmer in here, which means that all the air and everything that gets pushed onto there is 2 degrees warmer. So just so you know, the 360 millimeter had the biggest edge there in terms of the ambient temperature. Look, this pulls 270 right now, 268. The NHD 12L finished and interestingly we got a bit of a higher score than NHD 15. Now just looking at my thermal paste application, I do think I put a little bit more on this one than on the NHD 15, but the NHD 15 still got plenty of thermal paste, all of the IHS was covered, but maybe just needs a little bit more just because of the mounting brackets and so on, but it was a little bit faster than the NHD 15 and we got 38,055 points and were 2.37% slower. Max temperatures was 102 and the 99 as average, and the clock speeds were pretty good, around the same as what we saw on the previous ones. Not as high though as on the AIO, but still there. Okay, it's time to check out Best Buy and their top deals that are happening right now. And they're constantly changing, so it's worth taking a look time to time to see if there's new deals happening and massive savings to be had. By the way, if you are a Total Tech member, then you do get extra deals as a Total Tech member exclusive, but pick a category that you're interested in and have a look how much you can save. So here's some of the deals that I see that stand out that are worth checking out. So obviously the TVs, if you are looking for a TV, then there's huge, huge TV savings there. Whoa, that's good. From 2.8 grand to 1.9. I know it's expensive, but there's big savings there as well. There's TVs for all sorts of sizes and prices. Here's a little tip by going sort, best discount, and then you can see where you're gonna get the most discount. Look at this, this LG OLED is 600 quid from 1348 inch. That's absolutely amazing deal. Also laptops are on a deal, and this laptop that you can see over here, this is on a deal there as well, and look at that. This ROG Zephyrus 14 is $550 off. That is a ridiculous, ridiculous saving and an unbelievable performance that you can get for this mount. And if you like the white color, there is nothing like this out there. This is absolutely amazing. One of my favorite laptops that I'm using all the time. Anyway, if you haven't seen the video on the channel, go check it out. But another key laptop there is this Acer Predator there, which has 12700H processor and RTX 3060, 16 gigs of RAM, DDR5 and 512s of storage and it's less than thousand dollars. I know it's a gaming laptop but there's a ton of power there worth checking out. There is all sorts of desktops on the sale. Look at this HP Omen there 450 of full PC setups. If you're looking for a monitor there is this Lenovo 27 inch IPS panel is 350 dollars off. There's budget and high-end monitors, all sorts of deals, go check them out. Also accessories and storage. I mean this is one of the best ones here. This Samsung 980 one terabyte model, I know this is not super fast but Gen 3 drive, 
but it's $54. That's just ridiculous. 970 EVO, Samsung drives are really, really cheap. Even this T7 Shield, that's usually around $80 or $90, something like that. Oh my word. The 980 Pro one terabyte model is $80. For NVMe, one terabyte, super fast. Watch the digital black SN850X, one of the fastest drives on planet Earth. For two terabyte model, $159. $80 for a terabyte. That's insane price. Even GPUs discounted. This 3080 Ti from Gigabyte Gaming OC, only $836. That is a really, really good price for a 12 gigabyte model GPU. The CPUs, tablets, accessories, phones, all sorts of things off. If you haven't yet checked out Best Buy and Top Deals, I highly recommend check them out in the video description below. In the top, there's a link there. Thanks Best Buy for sponsoring this video. So this is another tower cooler from Noctua. This is the NHU14S and these has, have got the heat pipes the other way as well. So let's have a look how does this work here in terms of temperatures. As you can see, look at that, not thermal throttling. I think we have found something very interesting. Still not thermal throttling. And we did it much, much later than any of the other ones. The NHC15 should have much more cooling capacity, two towers, but it's still got the um, six heat pipes, which is the same as in here. But this one has only one fan, which we're using here, but it reached the thermal throttling much, much later. So we'll see what does the actual, you know, scores will show. Heatsink is nice and warm. I could dry my hair here. As you can see, clock speeds aren't that bad. 5.1, but dropped to five there. 5.5 at first, but then 5.1. So it's even struggling to hold the 5.1. So we'll see where this is gonna land in terms of the temperatures. 104 as the max temperature. 266 watts pulled. So quite a bit less than 285 there. Only two cores thermal throttle, but pretty much all of the P cores have thermal throttle. Okay, the U14S has finished. And what we can see is actually it got a bit of a higher score than the NHD 12L, which is actually what we should be getting because it does have a little bit more thermal performance here. It's only slightly faster, but we are 2.2% slower than the AIO. So still very, very impressive kind of air performance on this one. Now let's move on to the deep cool air coolers. Now this cooler already has uh, thermal paste pre-installed, but we're gonna remove that just to take the thermal paste out of the equation. So I'm not sure if this is better or worse. So we put the thermal paste all the same. As you can see again, this uh, CPU cooler has the heat pipes ru running long ways because this is one of the first CPUs that's actually rectangular rather than completely um, square. So we'll see how this one does in terms of the heat and how well does it keep up with all of this. Okay, this AK400 uh, is the same. The heat pipes will go a long ways, like I mentioned, uh, but it's got two uh, coolers and we'll see how good that one is. What I can tell you right now is this is extremely quiet, quiet cooler. Okay, there, there, let's go. Okay, that thermal throttled quite fast there, but this is very quiet. Okay, we're about halfway through and looking at the P-Core frequencies, we're actually running about 5 gigahertz, which is one of the lowest ones I've seen. And we're pulling, what was it, 250 watts. Yeah, look at that, 251 watts, something like that. So obviously we've reached the thermal limit of this one quite quickly. Yeah, the heating is very warm. So this little guy finished and we got a score of 37,559. 
So the interesting thing is this is actually slightly higher than the Chromax NHD15 from Noctua. That just shows how bad of either a thermal paste application I had or the heat pipe actually um, orientation is so important here. As you can see, this one only has four heat pipes compared to the six ones plus two towers on the Noctua one, but because it runs the same way as the CPU, we're getting slightly better scores with that one. Even though we had a lower clock speeds, the actual uh, score was slightly higher than Noctua, but we're talking about 0.5%, which is um, you know not actually noticeable. But let's put the next cooler on. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is AK500 Zero Dark. And the interesting thing about this one is it's got one fan, but the heatsink is massive here. As you can see, massive, massive part of the heatsink compared to the previous one. It's like double the size of the heatsink, as you can see, boom, boom. But it's got one fan, previous had two fans. I think this one has five heat pipes. So one more heat pipe than the AK400. Let's see how well does this one do. Start and zero. Okay, the AK500 just finished and uh, we got quite a good score. So looking at the score, it's 37,860, which is 2.87% slower than the 360mm AIO. It's faster than the AK400, but interestingly, slightly slower or lower than the Noctua NHD 12L. The 12L actually had two fans, so maybe that's uh, what helped it there. But this is still uh, very, very interesting. What I, what I like about this one is the design. Like the design just feels like a massive big block of things, but to be only 2.9% slower than the AIO, it's uh, very, very interesting. Let's move on to the next one, the best one from Deep Cool, which is the Dual Tower AK620. But the thing is, this one here now, if I'm not mistaken, has the heat pipes running the other way. So we'll see if we see similar type of performance, uh, you know, characteristics as the NHD15 from Noctua. Just touching those VRAM heat sinks here. They're like very, very hot, probably 45, 50, 60 degrees, something like that, like quite hot. Okay, so this is now the AK620, instantly thermal throttled. That was interesting. Thermal throttled, but then came back. Now it's not thermal throttling and now swapped in as well again so that was interesting quite high temperature still for like the first run there so maybe we're seeing the same type of characteristics that because the heat pipes are going the other way it would be better if they went the other way just like a bit of a longer touch on the, the heat pipes there i've got to say i really like these deep cool designs just the fan is really cool and then just the minimalistic kind of a tower cooler that's quite powerful Obviously, we're pulling more than Intel limits to 85 limits just to push every one of these coolers to the maximum to see like how well they cool them and hold the clock speeds. So right now, this is on the third place here now. The only um, cooler better is the NSU 12A. So very, very good uh, score for this one. Even though this was the tower cooler the other way. So I do have a feeling that the NHD 15 had some kind of an interesting thing. Maybe in the end, we'll do that one again. Because right now, I'm not quite happy with the you know performance of that one. Because that one should be much higher. Unless there is an actual some kind of a physical thing that doesn't quite make contact with them, but we'll see what we can do about that. So we have finally the Arctic Freezer 34 du eSports Duo installed, the infamous cooler. I've got actually two collars in here, but I didn't have the LGA 17 or 1200 mounting kit for the black anyway finally they got the white one installed it's all installed let's see how well does it do there and zero it 
instantly thermal throttles. So the eSports Duo from Arctic Freezer has actually completed. And the score we got was 37,139, which is 4.72% slower than the 360mm AIO. Now, it is almost the same, like 0.5.6% similar score to what we had the Noctua NHD 15. So I'm guessing we're going to have to do the NHD 15 again here. This over here is one of the most different coolers that we have over here. This is the downdraft cooler and this is a Dark Rock TF2. It's got two fans, kind of like a two towers, but they're like kind of stacked on top of each other. So you blow the air down, which actually is probably going to give us the best VRAM uh, cooling temperature because we're going to blow the cool air down. But let's see how does it do. Okay, 10 minutes, go and zero. Instantly thermal throttling. First run, quite high clock speeds. We'll see how long is that gonna last. Look at that, this one. We've got four minutes to go and it runs 4.9 gigahertz. Yikes, that's quite a few hundred megahertz lower. So the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2 has finished and as you can see we got 36,514 points which is 6.3% uh, slower than the AIO. Now even though the percentage doesn't look that low there, the interesting thing is that we were pulling much much lower wattages and that just shows that this is not as good of a cooler as what we can see from um, you know the AIOs and some of the other air coolers although there is six heat pipes and they run the same kind of um, kind of way in there but still not as good as the others next off pure rock 2 fx So, Pyrrhic 2 FX, look at that nice RGB lighting, let's go. And thermal throttling instantly. Honestly, I think the Be Quiet ones are, they have some kind of a mounting issue. A lot of the coolers just have the same four pipe design, right? But they don't pull as much wattage as, as some of the other coolers, so it's just interesting. So we got a score from this uh, Be Quiet Pure Rock and as you can see 36,353 and that is actually the lowest score so far. As you can see the clock speeds as well were lower than 5 GHz averaging there on the peak cores and uh, quite hot temperatures. Now the next cooler is interesting. This one here is Assassin X 120R from Thermalrite. And this is actually like a $19 cooler. Okay, it's one of the cheapest coolers you can get. So I'm very curious, where is this gonna slide in, in this corp of spec? So let's get this changed and then see, whoa, how good that cooler is. Alrighty. The cooler is on. Let's see what type of magic has it got in its sheath. What else do we do? 10 minutes and go. Oh, okay, there we go. We thermal throttled. Look at that. There is a 56 seconds to go and our $20 cooler is still keeping the 13900K about five gigahertz, just drops down to 4.9, but some of the previous coolers were already 4.9 at this point. Look, 5.5 at first, then drops down to five. 5.1, some of the cores, very interesting. 
So this $19 cooler got 37,257 points, which is 4.42% slower than the AIO in terms of the score. Obviously not in terms of the temperature and how good is it the cooling, but actually seeing how good does it cool down the 13900K in the 10 minute throttle test. Now that is faster than the Arctic Freezer and both of the Be Quiet coolers that we had here. Very, very interesting uh, result here. Now we've got a similar cooler there, the Assassin King 120SE, which has actually five heat pipes. This one has four. So we're gonna swap it up to the five heat pipe one and then see what's the difference then. By the way, every single cooler, test bench setup, thermal paste, what I'm using to clean up this, everything will be linked in the description below if you wanna pick up any of these. So check them out down there. So the Assassin King finished and we got 37,083 points, which is actually a lower score than the four heat pipe version, which is just very, very interesting. The four heat pipe version got about 0.6% higher score. 37,257, this one 37,083, but we're 4.87% slower than the AIO in terms of the 10 minute thermal test. Interesting, that's cooled down very, very fast, but the VRMs, they are hot. The last cooler, what we have here is the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin 120. So this is a dual tower. This costs only $40 as well. And I highly recommend you check out all the coolers in the description below, but this is probably the best bang for buck cooler in the world. But let's see how good is it now in actually cooling this down. Get it installed and then we'll see. Okay, so this infamous cooler then, the best bang for buck. Let's have a look, 10 minutes, go. Look at that, still not thermal throttling. Not thermal throttling, and we're thermal throttling. So that took a bit of time until we got thermal throttling. We're still pushing 285 watts through. Let's see how well is this gonna do. Okay, so this bad boy just finished and look at the score, 38,206. That's the fourth place of the cooler and the costs less than half of any of those that are above it. It's only 1.99% slower than the AIO, but is so much cheaper. This is very, very interesting. Now what I'll do is off camera, I'm gonna do the NHD 15 test again, cause I'm quite not happy where this slots in there. Alrighty, so all of the coolers have been tested now and time to kind of look at the results and make some kind of conclusion. What have we learned? and uh, some of the things that we shouldn't do. Number one, yes, the 13900K can be air cooled, as you can see. Even at the lowest coolers here, what we can see, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 FX, it's only 6.74% slower at 285 watts power limits, which is just absolutely insane. Obviously, we're letting the motherboard push it to the absolutely maximum there. So if you do want to cool the 3900K, it is possible, but I highly recommend sticking to the stock Intel recommended value. So that is 253 watts at the PL2 limit. And if we pull the limits down there and we'll test it all of these, again you'd see a much smaller difference between the best and the uh, lowest cooler just because they're all able to keep the clock speeds a much higher and then we're not less you know thermally limited here this is massively pushing this to the thermal limits and you know this is not the usual cpu testing or like the cooler testing but this is just kind of to show that okay what if we did put a really bad cooler on the, the intel cpus how bad is the like performance in the end actually because the cpus and motherboard they're so smart they're gonna clock themselves down straight away if they can't keep if it's thermally you know like bad or 
we get to the TJ Maxx, it starts to pull this down. Let's see what happens and how high are the clock speeds and what's the actual performance of the CPU or of the actual um, system. But as you can see, the 13th and 12th gen of Intel CPUs, the CPU shape is actually different. And that's why there's some of the kind of cooler complications come in. AM5 is still kind of the same as AM4 in terms of the size and, you know, shape and everything the shape is different but the cooling is kind of the same but now here it's kind of rectangular which means uh, some issues and as you can see the nhd 15 results here i did it the second time as well and this was just this morning when it was new day the room is much cooler like a few degrees cooler loads of thermal paste i mean i i caked it in thermal paste making sure that there's no like bad application of the thermal paste so that everything gets nicely covered and you can see that the chromax black is getting slightly higher score as you can see there it's still 37,000. we're not going to reach the 38,000 mark there couldn't quite hack that one but about 300 points higher which is what we improved about 0.7 percent but you can see that the ak500 and nhd12 and, and nhu14s they are all better but they're actually lower end coolers if you put this in like a ryzen system uh, with a am4 socket or am5 socket we'd see that nhd15 has the most kind of thermal capacity to cool things down and that is the highest end of nocto cooler with dual towers and everything but in here we can see that this is not quite the result with all of the dual towers and some of the air coolers need to be redesigned and I think Nocto will be doing this with the NHD15. I haven't heard anything concrete yet but Nocto, if you have a new cooler there, I'd love to check it out. So when we see like the best coolers and lowest coolers, we actually now because of the new CPU kind of shape design, we'll have to start retesting this and when you see testing online that are tested perhaps in the lower or like some other kind of uh, platforms like Ryzen's or Intel earlier CPUs that are actually square, then it might be a bit of a different story just because the dies underneath the IHS might be in a different place and the coolers might be utilized or getting the heat out much better than now. So unless those coolers are tested with 13th or 12th gen Intel CPUs, uh, you know, I take it with a grain of salt if you plan to go and air cool one of the 12th and 13th gen. Which brings me to the conclusion, an AIO for these high-end Intel CPUs is a must. As you can see, the um, Siren 360 uh, AIO is topping out any of these air coolers here and this is really to see even the burst work clouds where you'd see the 285 watts pulled maybe like I don't know 30 40 seconds the 360 millimeter AIOs are able to pull all the heat out without thermally throttling but the air coolers usually after five six seven ten seconds something like that they start thermally throttling and the frequencies and water just start to come down and you know everything starts to play the game so as you can see if you are running Intel's um, CPUs that run like the 200 watt plus then I'd recommend an AIO Obviously, lower ones can have an AIO as well, but it's not necessary in there. But I'd say that 200 plus watts, if we see the turbo boost there, that will be definitely an AIO territory here just to get the ultimate things. And you don't want your CPU to run like 100 degrees all the time. The lower the temperature of the CPU is, the kind of healthier this is for the, for the CPU. If it's 50 or 75 degrees, there's not that much of difference there. If we start to reach the very, very high end, that is bad. But if you keep the CPU actually load on the load on the same temperature, this is not as bad as like the big temperature spikes. That's the one that's bad for the CPU. Um, which the AIO can actually help to cool down. The worst thing for a CPU and silicon is, is the burst very high load and then very cool down again because then the temperature spikes can cause uh, cracks on some of the you know silicon it's in very very low end cases which you didn't really need to worry about but in theory that's what happens so yes the 13900k can be air cooled but i really think some of the higher end coolers here are for the 13700k i know they're 200 and 40 somewhere there like wattage pulled but i still think they will do much better job at do like cooling that down for example the nocto nhu 12a here as you can see is probably one of my 
favorite coolers if we're talking about okay money is not an obstacle here air cooling what's the best there it looks nice it's compact it's black it's very very quiet but still packs a ton of performance as you can see the best air cooler here in the bunch but then the dual tower coolers there with the ak6 20 zero dark is very very good as well only slightly slower and the absolute budget king as i have been preaching on my channel the thermal right peerless assassin 120 is right in there in the top there with ak620 and nhu 12a nhu 12 is like three times the price of that cooler AK620 is I think two or a little bit more there. So it's impressive to get that type of performance out of such a low price cooler. And last thing what I do want to mention is that the thermal paste application really, really matters. And depends which thermal paste you use. And I was quite happy with this one here, the Arctic MX6, which is the new um, thermal paste from Arctic. It's the, like the higher end thermal compound. You can get some of the more expensive ones as well, but this is quite affordable, but newer one as well. Spend a little bit of money, maybe $10, $15 or even $20 if you get the high end system to get a better thermal paste and put quite a bit of thermal paste there uh, so you make sure that your cooler will have good contact all around the CPU. I kind of have come away from the just the dotted kind of design of the CPU and I want to spread it out and make sure that before I even put the cooler on I can see that the thermal paste is all over the CPU and then when I put the cooler down I know this spreads everywhere and there's no part of the IHS that isn't covered so I'd recommend you do the same as well because as you can see with the Noctua Chromax and um, we did get a little bit of a better performance there. I'm not sure if this is because of the temperatures in the room are a little bit lower or the application was better, but I do think this really, really matters. If you want to build yourself the best bank for Bok Creator PC though, check out the build guide in the description below. There is a PC for your budget there. There's four video parts. Pick the one that's closest to your budget. And then in the video, I'm explaining how you can configure and adjust the budget to your needs. Definitely the best one to check out for created if you're looking to save money and get the best performance pc it's in the description below thank you very much guys for watching and i'll see you soon bye bye